Hey everyone, it's Gary Anderson here. How y'all doing? I hope you had a good couple of weeks. Welcome to Gary E's Sketch Cards, episode number 48. And this week I am doing a sketch card of Torch, one of the dreadnoughts from G.I. Joe. The uh, Not the uh, G.I. Joe line from like the 40s or 50s or whenever they came out, but from the cartoon series that came out in the 80s. Uh, and this is number two of three sketch cards that I gave away a few weeks back. And this one was won by Brad Utterstrom. Brad U, this is the, uh, the card I made for you here. And, uh, I guess here we go. I should mention Brad Utterstrom is a brilliant sketch card artist. Uh, the guy's really good. Um, I can put a link to his website, I guess, here and, uh, kind of give him a couple of props and, um, Check his stuff out, man. It's awesome. Follow him on Instagram um, and all that. And uh, yeah, you'll see some really cool sketch cards. You'll see how sketch cards should be done. If you're watching this show, you're watching how sketch cards could theoretically be done mostly from week to week. But Brad really knows how to do it and, and does it very, very well. All that said, I do appreciate you watching. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the support and the subscriptions and the comments that I've been getting. Um, like I said, we're, uh, I'm back. So, um, this card was a really fun one to do. Uh, it, it was a character that I am marginally familiar with. Uh, I used to watch the GI Joe cartoon back in the day and torch. It, it, it was always funny to me that, uh, the Dregnocks were, uh, they gave him like some of the most violent, but like everyday weapons like torch has a blow torch. Not that that's every day, but you know, um, one guy was cutter. He had a chainsaw, so he was running around with a chainsaw, you know, causing havoc and, and that, and, uh, you know, it, it was just kind of funny to me to think that, you know, those figures would not, uh, be allowed nowadays to like young kids. Cause you know, they'd be running around like, we, it's cool to have a chainsaw, but you know, back in the eighties, we really didn't, didn't care about that kind of thing. So, um, I, I miss the eighties sometimes. Don't get me wrong, I don't think your children should be running around with chainsaws, but, you know, like I said, the 80s were a different time. I should mention that I did use some photo reference for this particular drawing. I used the face of Kurt Russell from the film Death Proof. Uh, I took the photo and tried to... I didn't try to copy the likeness so much as I tried to copy the pose and the hairdo. Um, Kurt Russell had some, uh, had an awesome hairdo in that photo and I kind of wanted to use it for torch after finding probably a, a dozen pictures of the action figure. When I Googled, uh, torch, it, it didn't, uh, didn't give me what I wanted. So I had to kind of go a different route. And I do that from time to time. If I'm working on a drawing that requires a specific pose. I may go online somewhere and find somebody who actually has that pose, but, you know, uh, superimpose the actual face or whatever that I need for the sketch card and that. Uh, most of them I'll do just kind of from a, a photo reference. But uh, yeah, this one was very unique. Um, like I said, there's the hair. The hair was probably the best part and probably the most funnest because I never would have been able to draw the hair like that unless I had the photo reference. So um Regardless of your feelings on photo reference, I know that it has been a hotly contested debate amongst uh, artists and illustrators and that uh, I chose to do so. I chose to, you know, grab a picture uh, from the Internet and sort of model this sketch card uh, after Kurt Russell. It would have been interesting to actually do a sketch card of Kurt Russell as Torch. Uh, I don't know if that would have been overstretching it a bit, but um you know, as it as it turns out, I guess this version of Torch has Kurt Russell's hair. So that's 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 close enough, I think. So my history with G.I. Joe is uh, and I may have told this story uh, in a previous video. Basically, when I was like 10 or 11 years old, my parents gave me a J.C. Penney catalog. And this is around Christmas time. This is around November. And they said, you know, go in through here. We're not going to ask you to fill out a Christmas list, uh, but go through here, circle some stuff that you might want, and, you know, Santa Claus will will bring you a couple of things. And so I'm like, all right, fine, you know. Um, and one of the things I found was a 12-pack, I believe, of the early run non-Kung Fu Grip G.I. Joe action figures. Had like rock and roll and snake eyes and scarlet and cobra commander and destro and like the, the 
Cobra Soldier and a couple others. Um, but my parents actually, and, and I love them for this to this day, my parents actually bought all the figures. You know, there, were, there was a bunch of stuff that I put in there. And Dad went the extra mile, I think, and uh, kind of bought everything. And, you know, Mom was not made aware of this. So, uh, yeah, it was a good Christmas. And that Christmas, man, that, that, that Christmas spawned a lot of things. It spawned my love for comic books. Uh, it got me a few extra Star Wars figures and that. But it got me the, ori- uh, the original 12 G.I. Joe action figures, as I said before, without the Kung Fu grip. The only thing that I was kind of disappointed with, and I was 11, I didn't know any better, was it didn't have any of the bubble uh, bubble cards or whatever, the, the actual uh, packaging that uh, you get in the stores. They came in boxes with the uh, file folder, file card, profile. That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking of. The, the profile uh, on a separate card. And, uh, you know, it, it would have been cool to kind of leave them in the package. But, you know, when I was 11, I really wasn't thinking about that. But uh, I learned years and years later that those figures, had I actually left them in the box, would have been worth a lot. Because um, when G.I. Joe came out with the Kung Fu action grip, the figures with the non-Kung Fu action grip, you know, then became more valuable. And I, I, I played the crap out of those figures, man. It was great. One of the best uh, scenarios I came up with with those G.I. Joe figures is I had a gun, if you will, a toy gun. Now, I should specify a toy gun that shot four rubber bands. And it was basically a wheel that when you had, you, you'd put a rubber band on the wheel and you'd click it back and it had four knobs on it. And what you would do is when you pull the trigger, it would shoot one rubber band and then the wheel would advance and have the second rubber band ready to go. And this was for like an old carnival shooting gallery thing. I got it like a fun fair, like long before I got the figures, long before I was 11. But what happened was, was over the years, the gun was, well, the toy gun was a little, uh, uh, a little beat up. So it would sometimes, the mechanism inside wouldn't always catch the wheel. It would basically just rotate that wheel and all four rubber bands would come shooting out. So what I did was I got the idea, there was an air conditioner box and I kind of started duct taping um, cardboard pieces and stuff in it. And I made kind of a cross section of a house. And then I made... Um, furniture, you know, tables, chairs, uh, dressers. Was, I made it almost like a little military installation. You know, I didn't, I didn't, uh, have to buy all the play sets in that. I could actually come up with my own and, uh, make stuff out of, like I said, cardboard and index cards and things like that. And the reason I made them out of index cards, the furniture and equipment stuff is because I would put the figures like one in a room, there were four rooms. So I put one in each room and I would have this shootout game with the rubber band gun where I would try to hit, you know, the G.I. Joe figure. And if I hit them, they would go flying back, but they would fly into the equipment and furniture and stuff. And because it was made of index cards, all this stuff would fly everywhere. And so it was like a little movie, you know, every time. And I would just sit there uh, and man, for about, uh, I don't know, about one summer, I think I, I spent at least every day setting those up and kind of shooting at them. And if I, you know, the, the idea was that I would have to hit all four with just one round, if you will, of four rubber bands. Um, but that, you know, again, 11 years old, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, you know, we had imaginations back then and yeah, people still have imaginations, but you know, like I said, it, it, the, you, I hear a lot of stories from, people uh, my age, I'm 46 now, I believe, uh, who used to like build stuff, you know what I mean? Like build their own toys or build their own play sets and things like that. And and I used to, like I said, I used to do the same thing. And it was, you know, such a great way to utilize imagination, you know what I mean? So, uh, so that was my history with G.I. Joe. Like I said, I, I bought a few of the figures with the Kung Fu grip uh, later on. But I, I mostly stayed with Star Wars. I didn't buy a lot of the uh, later G.I. Joe action figures. And I didn't buy any of the Dreadnoughts or Zartan. Sorry, Brad. I, I just I didn't do it. So 
Um, you know, I didn't have all the money in the world. I should mention that that jump cut was not intentional. It was, uh, turned out my phone actually shut down halfway through filming. I was just lucky enough to catch it without advancing a little, uh, without advancing too far on the sketch card. So I apologize for that. Uh, also the quality looks a little better. I think I got the lighting right this time around. So maybe it was a, it was meant to be you know, the phone shutting down. I think it was meant to be. So, um, there you have it. So, uh, I was very happy with the sketch card. Still am. Uh, I, I've, I've since mailed this off to Brad who he, he let me know that he got it and that he was really digging it. Uh, uh, I really, like I said, I'm still a little green with working with the Copics, Copics markers. Um, I am doing a little bit more behind the scenes. I'm not filming everything, uh, but I'm trying to familiarize myself more with the, uh, with the markers and you know, it's, it's, a lot of it's coming together, you know, uh, really well. So, you know, but I've ranted about using new materials in the past. So I, I, I'll leave that rant for later, I guess, or leave that, uh, that whole thing for later. Um, I decided to try some experimental lighting here. Uh, I, at the last minute I decided, you know what, I, I can't really have this big flame on the end of the, um, the flamethrower here. I called it a blowtorch before. It may have been a blowtorch, but he used it as a flamethrower. So uh, if I got that wrong, I apologize. Just leave a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, but I, I didn't want to have the flame too high. I wanted to have it just lit, just enough to like, you know, hold up close to his face and then have this sort of like yellow light reflecting off of the side of his face. And I think it turned out kind of neat. So this was a fun one to do. Like I said, it, it I hadn't quite, delved into drawing a lot of G.I. Joe, and I may start doing it from time to time, um, but this was a fun one to do. The only drawback, like I said, was finding any kind of half-decent reference photos. Uh, I don't think Torch was in any of the movies, um, and, you know, kind of doing it from the old cartoon, the old animation, you know, um, was not really doable. So, like I said, in the end, I, I used a picture of Kurt Russell to sort of put in the foundation and then I kind of filled in everything just off the cuff. So, and I think it turned out great. I think it turned out all right. And like I said, when, uh, Brad, who got it, he told me that he really dug it. And, uh, it's, it's, it's cool to know that, um, other artists can be supportive of other artists. Um, I've been working on a collaboration with Travis Caicos. I believe I've mentioned this in other videos and it's finally done. So I'm going to be editing the, Start to finish speed draw video, if you will, of that. It's a uh, Kylo Ren and Ray painting uh, where Travis did Kylo Ren and I did Ray uh, on the same canvas. So it turned out really awesome. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for watching, for sharing and uh, commenting on the videos. If you like the speed draw videos that you see, please subscribe to my channel for more of them. Uh, there's going to be, uh, like I said, a couple of start to finish longer length videos that I will uh, do commentary over. I haven't quite figured out what I want to talk about. Uh, I could probably only go so far as the process, so um, I may talk a little bit more. But like I said, I'm kind of putting it together. It's going to take a little time, so be patient. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. The information is in the lower right-hand corner at Gary underscore Enerson. Um, you know, hit me up there if you like. Uh, thank you, everybody, again for watching and supporting. Thank you again, Bradu, for uh, entering the giveaway. And I will see you next week uh, as I finish up the outlining here. Uh, take care. Um, as I'm recording this now, there's like a killer storm going through. So I think I'm going to cut it a little bit short before the music, before I get, uh, zapped and all that kind of stuff. So take care, everybody. I will see you next time on Gary E. Sketch Cards. Have a good week. Once again, this is a sketch card of Torch from G.I. Joe, one of the Dreadnoughts, uh, one of the bad guys. Don't play with fire kids and don't play with chainsaws. Take care. Sorry.